Okay. All right, guys. So, hey, so we're out away from the table today. You know, I've been talking about working on this truck chassis for a couple months. Uh, finally got my shop rearranged, got this truck spun around. Um, I tried moving all the camera gear out and not having to move the truck around, but nothing would reach. Um, even now, my torch cam, I don't have quite enough reach on it to uh, really get some good arc shots in here in some of these joints. So it's going to be a little bit different show tonight, not a... Uh, not as up close as uh, maybe we're used to, but really tonight what I want to show you guys is using um, like using the pedal, doing some of this tube work, some of this chassis work, um, getting around some of these um, like out of position welds, um, like using the thigh master technique, and then also using the uh, the finger switch and setting up like a like a two T pulse. So <laughs> I know you guys can't see it, but the laptop is about 15 feet away from where I'm working. So it's going to be pretty hard for me to get over um, and check the comments, you know, all the time. But I'll try to get over there and uh, see what you guys are saying, try to answer some questions here and there. I can also kind of zoom around with this camera. We can, we can zoom in pretty good. So we'll just kind of play with it and see what works as we go along. So yeah, anyway, um, I did not build this chassis. Um, a really good friend of mine had been working on this truck for about five or six years. Um, had the chassis built and then I don't know why, but I'm the one welding it up. Um, so there's a couple tube things in the, uh, the main cage I'm gonna change before I weld it all out. But for the most part, um, it's pretty standard uh, tube work. So let me go ahead and get set up. We'll start running. Um, I'll run some of the simple joints sitting on the stool, just using the, uh, the foot pedal. And then I'll kind of switch around, show some out of position stuff, laying on the floor underneath the truck, and then using the finger switch. So I know it's a little bit different. Um, Fly high 8060. What do you think about the Storm 215? Um, that's a running little son of a gun. There's uh, one of our guys, um, Brad White. He's actually using that for a subcontract job right now where he's cutting up like the loading point for uh, big roll off dumpsters. He's cutting that off with the plasma on the Storm 215 and then welding like 3 8 plate um, back into it. So for a little machine, it's, uh, it's got quite a bit of power. And those have been a really solid, stable machine for us, too. Good evening, Mountains. Uh, Kurt, I don't think I've seen you before, but welcome aboard. So, yeah, a little, uh, little freer form tonight, so bear with me. I'd like to start doing more, uh, more shop work like this as... Uh, as we go along, now that we've covered a lot of basics on the table, I'd like to start moving a lot of that, um, a lot of those techniques out here. So tonight I am running my 210 EXT, uh, running a nine, oh, running a nine air-cooled torch with a Edge Gas Lens 15 on it, running 332nd tungsten, 2% length, nothing crazy. So yeah. Let's uh, let me get some gloves and we'll start figuring out where we're going to get started. <clears throat> now, as I didn't build this chassis, there are some uh, rather large tacks out on some of the tubes. Um, so I don't know how loud the mic is, but when I go to grind some of those tacks down, it might it might blow your eardrums out. So I'm sorry. Speaking of. Uh, Tax. There's a couple I need to buff down real quick, and then we'll go ahead and get started. 
Like I said, the guy that originally started doing this chassis, I think he was going to MIG weld it all. And so there's some, there's some real big MIG welds in some of these joints where I really don't like them. So I'm going to buff these down just a little bit and we'll get started. And this is not chromoly. This is, uh, oh, this is DOM. Um, it's like 133 wall ish. Try not to show you guys my plumber's crack too much. That's enough to get us started at least. I'm not planning on running a whole lot of this, just kind of showing you guys how you can set up the finger switch. Um, so yeah, I'm running 170 amps on the pedal. <laughs> Welding carbon steel, yeah. I can do it all. I just, uh, I got known for doing aluminum, so. There is quite a bit on this truck, too, that, uh, oh, let me pull this chair out. So there is quite a bit on this truck, too, that we are going to MIG weld. I'm going to switch back and forth between um, my MTS-225, and I've got a Cyclone 262. Um, so this week, obviously, we're going to do TIG. I know, oh, my God, big surprise, we're doing TIG. But the next couple weeks, we'll, uh, we'll switch over to some MIG. Um, yeah, show you guys the, M the MTS-225 on MIG and then the uh, Cyclone 262. Try to mix it up a little bit. What brand is my flap disc? Those are Nortons. Let me grab one real quick. These are the Norton Blaze. I like Norton. They're easy to get. They work really well. They're pretty clean. So <clears throat> I'm not endorsed or anything by Norton, but I do, uh, I do like Norton abrasives. <clears throat> All right, let's get a little less talk, a little more action. Where do we want to start? We'll go ahead and start by running this joint right through here. I might need to buff that down a little bit more. We've got a good one right here too. We'll start right out here on this corner and then uh, we'll move around. I'm gonna grab, I am running 1 16th uh, ER70 and I've got some ER80 as well. Let me uh, wipe this filler rod down and wipe this joint down real quick and we'll finally get welding. All right. Go 
So you see even like being bent over here, this is still pretty awkward to run the pedal. But we can make it work. When I'm doing chassis like this, I do like to move around quite a bit. So we don't want to put too much heat in one area and then have it really start pulling one direction. So I will kind of like work here. I'll move around a lot um, just to try to disperse the heat. Generally, I like to work side to side. Um, I've got quite a bit over here was already done. So like I said, I didn't start welding this up. So it's been kind of a kind of an adventure. Using just a little bit of a foot pedal pulse just to maintain uh, maintain our heat control. I know the arc shot cam would be a lot more helpful, but it just doesn't quite reach out this far with all the electronics that are uh, required for it. So as I get down on this coming downhill now, I am getting a little bit out of position. We've got enough heat in that spot. We're going to go ahead and move over here just a little bit. So this is a nice one. We've got a nice, nice spot for a hand. We've got plenty of room for my foot pedal. So let's weld up this joint and then we'll try to find something a little more out of position. We'll do some thigh master work real quick. The one thing when doing tube work, and I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but as you're going around the tube, you have to be very mindful of your torch angle. Because as you're rolling around the tube, you can't just stay, you know, you can't just keep your torch in one position and move around. You really have to roll your torch over, so. It's just something to be mindful of. You guys haven't done a lot of tube work. You really need to concentrate on, on being able to roll your wrist around that tube. I'm getting into a spot where one of those big MIG welds was. So now I'm starting, starting to lose my torch position just a little bit. All right. We've got another good one we can kind of sneak in over here. One nice thing about this truck is there, there are quite a few seating options. All right, so I'm still in a pretty good position here. It's a little tight coming around with this, uh, this tube here. So we'll have to kind of roll through it. And that's where having those different sized back caps really helps. I like to make it hard on myself when we're doing this. So show you guys with the large cap. And actually we can kind of start almost upside down on this tube. So I'm starting as far down as possible almost overhead you guys probably hear me breathing as i'm straining to stay in position don't get fat it makes chassis work a lot less fun. So we go let this get some post flow on it so we don't burn it up. Now we can almost kind of come around.
Give me some post flow. All right, so the gaming ham, dumb question. When you wipe the filler rod down from contaminants, do you get contamination from your gloves and the air? <coughs> so these gloves are actually super clean. I mean, these aren't super clean, but these are what I would consider clean enough. I've got a pair of gloves that uh, I do quite a bit of MIG welding with now that they're, they got a little bit too dirty for TIG. So once my TIG gloves start getting pretty dirty, I'll just transfer them over, start using them for MIG gloves. So yeah, I try to keep my gloves pretty clean. Um, here is my super special set. So like, these are my aluminum gloves until they're super clean. So I try to keep a clean pair of gloves uh, for TIG work, because obviously you are uh, you are sliding your hand down the filler rod, so you don't want you know greasy gloves or anything like that. But these are pretty clean. Um, bah, bah, bah. And you can like the filler rod. You know I keep everything in the rod tubes um, or like the rod guards. So I try to keep I try to keep all the moisture off of it. Try to keep any like other like. Uh, dirt and contamination from getting in the tube. So I'm pretty anal about keeping those closed up. Uh, my shop is climate controlled, so the humidity is not crazy bad in here. Um, but the rod guards help out a lot with that. And then let me see one more. Um, fly high. Do you weld full time or just as a hobby? I actually, so I was the, the lead welder at Pro Charger, Superchargers for what, almost eight years. Um, I left there and then went to go work in the aerospace industry for about a year and a half as the shop supervisor. And about two and a half months ago, I went out on my own. So now I do a lot of uh, oh, custom work like this. I do a lot of production, um, like production runs with specialty parts. So that's basically my business is doing a production TIG. So yeah, between doing this, working for Everlast, and uh, doing some, some welding. I keep pretty busy. Let's see. Yeah. So here we go. This one's pretty... This position's pretty low. I think you guys, let me tilt that camera down a little bit. I'm gonna tilt down just a tiny bit. That way you guys can kind of see. I get, I get some guys to give me questions about this. Like how do you run the pedal out of position? And this is it. You just put it between your knees. Run it like that, like you're working a thigh master. So kind of show you guys some of that real quick. So even running it with my thighs, I can still keep a pretty decent pulse if I really need to. Typically I'll just run like a straight amperage if I'm using my, like my knees to run the pedal. But if you do get in a little bit of a tricky spot, it's actually not too bad to uh, kind of work the pedal in and out. We got real, real tricky little spot here because of this angle.
The other thing that's fun about doing stuff like this is deciding how you're going to hold the torch to get that proper, that proper angle. I'm actually going to run this into that joint. So I'm going to come on this back side. I get a real good torch angle this way. And this is where running like a big gas lens cup really comes in handy doing chassis work. So you get a real tight corner like this, a real tight joint. You can run a whole lot of stick out and still have really good gas flow or really good gas coverage. Like on this 15, I'm still only running 30 CFH. So I'm not running a crazy high amount of gas, but I can run over an inch of stick out and I can run probably two inches of stick out on, on these edge cups. I've got to bump this out just a little bit just to get down there in that corner. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys can really see that real well. But we're running probably an inch and a half of stick out now. And that'll get us right in here in the deepest part of this angle. So we'll step back. Get a real nice tie in there. All right, let's see. We've got a nice long run here we could do. I'm gonna shorten that stick out back up just a little bit. Check on you guys. Okay. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Richard, I need to try the Nova slider. I'm uh, kind of one of those hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Oh my God. I've got too much. I'm like Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands when I get a thumb slider. Um, ba ba ba. Dumb question. Uh, do you want full time? There we go. That's smart. Really should try the Nova. Bryn, this is a, a project for a customer, a uh, really good buddy of mine. Uh, we actually went to high school together, and he now owns a custom paint shop called Tanner's Customs. Um, so this is his personal truck. It's a really radical setup. Let me see. Uh, John Sobel. So yes, we do have the Nova wireless pedals. Um, they are currently out of stock right now, but we should have them in here in another two weeks, three weeks. We should have another restock, probably shorter than that, probably a week now. I'm still thinking it's the week before Thanksgiving. Um, but yeah, John, we have our own, we have our own wireless pedal for the Everlast machines. Um, Let's run this long weld real quick while we still got the foot pedal on. Actually, screw it. I'll tell you what, we'll just set up the uh, finger switch real fast. So I'm going to unplug my pedal from my control. We'll set it off to the side here. A moon, everybody. So now, if I'm going to run the finger switch, if we're going to run this finger switch for a long time. I'll go ahead and wrap it up in my uh, uh, my lead cover. But for tonight, I'm just going to hook it up to the machine. And then leave it loose. And I'm just going to zip tie it to the uh, the torch like normal, but I'm not going to put it inside my lead cover. All right. So we're going to take the machine. I know you guys can't see this. We're going to go 
off a pedal, go to two T. I'm actually going to turn my amperage up to, a, I was at 170. I'm going to go up to 180 amps. We're going to go to standard AC pulse. We want a 66% on time. We want a 33% background percentage. I'm going to go 1.8 hertz on my pulse frequency. No downslope, three end amps, 10 seconds post flow, and 0.8 seconds pre flow. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, and this finger switch, guys, this comes with your, uh, should come with all the machines, but it's just an on off switch. So you literally just, there you go. We'll just zip tie this to the torch real fast. There you go. And I do have a guy sending me another style of uh, finger switch, which I can show you guys here in just a second. I'm doing a test for him on it. But it is a variable amperage control switch for your finger. I'm going to have to get a different zip tie. I grabbed one that was too short. Oh, the joys. Apparently, I had two different length zip ties in there. All right, and just clip those off. The nice thing is this, uh, well, so you can zip tie it to the torch like that and you can still rotate it, rotate it around. So I'll run it usually like that. <clears throat> so running this finger switch, I know this is kind of a lacking in action, but running the finger switch is really nice when you're doing out of position stuff. I'll use it a lot when I'm doing like boat or pontoon repair. Because generally you're upside down, you know, underneath a boat or something. It's really hard to run a foot pedal or especially doing cage work like this. They really do come in handy. Ahead and rub a couple of these down. All right. I'll move my ground. So here we go. We can start on the bottom side here. You can see. I can get a lot more comfortable in my position. I got a nice little armrest here on this knuckle. And then we can get the finger switch position. out where I want to put the filler rod. <laughs> it's 
So this allows us a lot more flexibility, obviously, with uh, with how you position your body, being that you don't have to run the foot pedal. So it makes it a lot easier to get. I got in between my lead and my finger switch. All right. And I dip that just a tiny little bit, so I'll switch this guy out. Just enough to make it cruddy. Let me catch back up with you guys. Um, we are going to make another... We are going to make another order of the hats and some t-shirts here pretty soon. We've got the, uh, we've got a new website update coming. So as soon as we get the new website launched, we're going to have a lot more availability to put stuff like hats, shirts, and stickers on the website. I will let you guys know when, uh, when that becomes available. Um, but, uh, will the variable switches from 6061 work? Yes, the variable switches from 6061 uh, we'll work on our machines. Um, one of our guys, um, Antoine Hobbs, uh, that's what he runs on all his production AC work. Um, that's his account name is a Hobbs on, uh, Instagram and TikTok, uh, And that's all he uses is the, uh, the 60, 61, um, variable control. So give him a, give him a check out if you want to see one of those in action. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to use, I already wiped down this 332. seconds. So I've got some 332 second that I'm going to run on this bigger plate. We're going to have to bump the amperage up just a touch on that. So I'm going to go up to 210 amps. Now, being that I am running this nine torch, I've got to be a little bit mindful of my amperage and my, uh, the heat that's in the torch, but running the pulse, it's not going to be like we're running straight 210 amps through this uh, 150 amp rated torch. So not quite as bad as a uh, straight amperage running this pulse. Here we go.
<clears throat> and a little bit on this side. Actually, we're going to run the smaller tube into that joint first. I'll just pick up my travel speed a little bit since I turned my amperage up. I'll run it down to that joint. So I've got a little bit of a gap that this, uh, whoever was originally building this left me. So on this, this section, I can actually do a little bit of a, a lay wire, lay wire pulse to try to better control that heat. So we're on a couple, we'll run another inch or two on this and then we'll move around again because we're starting to get quite a bit of heat in this area. Yeah, she's starting to get pretty hot. So we're going to go ahead and move around. Let's see. Here we go. So there we go. Make the uh, out of position stuff just a little bit easier using that finger switch. Let's see. Now I'm gonna get caught on this bolt. There we go. Got caught on this uh, strut bolt here. So that's, like I said, the nice thing about leaving that finger switch is zip tied. So I was running it like this. I want to move my torch around. Boom. Nice and easy to flip it around. So I'll see some guys like tape the uh, finger switches to their torch. Some of the different, um, you know, different companies make different switches. And that's why I really like just uh, using these zip ties because it, it's a lot easier. Sometimes the handles don't like to rotate super well on some of the torches. So just having it loose on there makes it really nice to keep that... Uh, We can reposition it. Ooh. All right. Oh. 
Let's see. Couldn't quite roll over there. It's gonna go rolling over the top. I'm running this like a hot, like a real hot root pass. I'm gonna come over. Come over this again with a with kind of a cap. These uh these quick couplers, these quick disconnects like this, they've got a real big um, uh, chamfer to them, a real big bevel to them, <clears throat> and so it takes a little bit to fill them up. So I like to run these like run them like a like a hot route, and then come back over them with a with a cover pass. Uh, Lee, no, this is a, uh, <clears throat> sorry, this is DOM tubing, so I am running DC. Uh, this hood, which hood is this? This is my, this is actually a Viking 3350. This is about a 10-year-old Viking 3350. I bought, well, 12 years old. I bought this thing in 2010. Is it true that you should disconnect your battery when welding on a car or truck? Yeah, I mean, you should. I wouldn't say that you uh, have to, but I have never had a problem with uh, frying the electronics on a car if I disconnected the battery. So I'm one of those where I say you probably don't have to, but at the same time, I always do just because I'd rather, uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And that comes from the high frequency, especially with TIG. That comes from the high frequency of the start, or like if you're doing aluminum welding, um, like you're welding up a tank or something like that inside the car, the, uh, the high frequency can mess with some of the uh, real sensitive electronics. So there's some people that say you don't have to, and it's just a wives tale, but I'd rather be, uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I always go ahead and disconnect the battery on any, any car or truck I'm working on. This one, fortunately, does not have any electronics in it yet, so I don't have to worry about that at all. Oh my God, he's running, he's running downhill. Just because I'm here, I'll probably finish up this joint, and then I'll look at a couple questions, and then we'll uh, we'll call it a night.
lost my torch angle there a little bit. I couldn't quite wrap my arm around like I thought I would be able to. Oh, let's see. Is there anything else that looks fun? Just while we're here. In the ribs. Oh, that's the angle I was wanting right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Oh, I think that's enough for tonight. <sighs> I know that's... uh. You guys can't get a really great view of that just because of the way we're set up. Um, tell us the truck details. Let me see. My business, I assume, rise would help to be contortionist. Yeah, Richard, it does. That's why, uh, yeah, doing chassis work or doing like tube work like this, yeah, you learn pretty quick um, how to really how to really force yourself into a, an awkward position. I mean, I've had my feet basically up over my head coming out the back window of a car and I'm in the trunk, you know, trying to weld a tube up. So you can get a, you can get some pretty interesting positions, especially doing chassis work. Um, there's some welds on the bottom side um, of this main, uh, this main rear platform that I'm gonna get some uh, jack stands off to jack this thing up in the air. I got a bunch of welding to do on the underside. So that'll be, uh, that won't be too bad, but there's some really tight corners kind of up around some of the edges of this where I'm gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a strain. But yeah, you learn real quick how limber uh, you used to be. Let's see, tell us the truck details, Dustin Apple. So this is uh, Chevy C10, it is, all-wheel drive. Um, it's a Subaru powertrain. It's going to be a billet block. Um, I think he's aiming for 800 to 1,000 horse at the tire. Um, it's going to be full custom carbon front clip. I think he's doing carbon doors and then a carbon custom carbon bed. Um, and it's going to be like a time attack truck. 
It's going to have a huge aero package. Um, he's got some just absolutely enormous, like, GTLM series uh, brakes for it. Um, it's going to be pretty wild. It's going to be a pretty cool little truck. It should be hopefully at SEMA next year. Um, so, yeah, you guys should see it at SEMA here within the next year or so. Um, it was supposed to be there a couple years ago, but, you know, that's how builds go sometimes. But, yeah, uh, billet block, Subaru, um, all-wheel drive. It's going to be pretty, pretty nuts when it's all done. Yeah, it's full Hoonigan style. Uh, greased fish. Pretty excited to get my 255 EXT delivered this Friday. Is there anything I can do to get the upgraded Nova pedal? I wasn't aware it didn't come with one. So that is a good point. Um, with our machines, we do offer like kind of our standard pedal, standard torches. Then we have the upgraded like uh, Nova, uh, Nova torches and pedals. So the Nova, the Nova pedals are, are going to be a little bit looser. Uh, they don't take, I think they take half as much force to depress. Um, it's a wider base. It's a different style of pedal. Um, the Nova pedals are kind of like the SSC style um, pedal. I already put mine up. But they, uh, they do say Nova on them. So that's when... You know, it's a total different style than the uh, the standard pedal. The standard's a little bit narrower and taller. Um, and to me, the standard pedal honestly does have like a little bit of a dead spot at the very end of it where you can be wide open and you got to come off probably, I don't know, a quarter inch or half inch before it starts to uh, the back down on the amperage. It's got a little dead spot at the top of it. Um, but yeah, we do offer the, uh, the Nova pedals. And the Nova pedals are pretty slick. I like them a lot. I've got an SSC pedal. Um, and the, the Nova pedals actually rated the pot inside of it's rated at 2 million cycles where the SSC is rated at 1 million. Um, so it's a really good deal. I think to, uh, to upgrade, if you don't <laughs> reach out to me and get my, uh, my sales link or my promo link, um, the Nova upgrade is like a hundred or 150 bucks for the torches and the pedal. Um, Depending on the machine, it's like 100 to 150. Uh, it's well worth it. Um, I think so. I think the Nova pedal makes you feel like you got a whole different machine versus standard pedal. Um, the torches are really nice. They're like a, the super flex. Like this, uh, this nine that I've been running is a, a Nova pedal. But I've got a promo link if you guys are interested in a TIG machine. Um, I've got a promo link that gets you the upgrades uh, for free. So you can get the Nova torch and pedal um, upgrade for free using my link. Uh, but to the guy that just bought a 255, um, Fish, if you call into the main office, they'll probably swap you out um, with the up, just do the upcharge, like the $100, $150 upcharge and just swap you out. You just ship that one back and they'll ship you the, uh, you'll ship your, pedals and your torque your pedal and your torches back and then they'll ship you out the nova and wire or no the nova pedal and the nova torches um for that upcharge so like i said like a hundred hundred fifty dollar upcharge and see if this call in and see if they'll swap you like that um wireless pedal i've got one i've got one of the very first prototypes so you guys don't want to see it but I do have one. It's up on a shelf. Um, yeah, this is one of the first prototypes. The there's been a lot of changes since uh, since that one. A lot of changes. I would love a TIG gun, but I have a weird welder. I'm not for sure what you mean there, blueberries. Anyway, um, yeah, we're coming up on an hour, so I didn't. Sorry if that was a little, uh, uh, sorry if that was a little more boring than, than normal. I'm trying to show you guys a little bit something different. Um, just some different techniques when you're running, you know, weird stuff like this. Uh, I know we didn't have the arc shots. I'll see if I can get like an extension cable or something. We're just, my arc shot cam comes to like right here from the, uh, from the laptops. I don't quite have enough. 
cable to really move around freely and feel like I'm not going to yank that thing too hard. So apologize for that. Hopefully, you know, seeing some of this stuff, you know, just makes you guys think about different, uh, different projects you're working on, how you can utilize, you know, some different controls. So appreciate it guys. Um, we've got some, uh, some new information for the typhoons coming out pretty soon. Uh, we ha should have the new website up within a week, I believe. Um, there'll be a lot of, a lot of new stuff on there. We're partnering up with edge. We're going to have all the edge cups available, um, on the website and also some of, uh, like we'll call them like pro kits. So some of the, some of us will pick out like, you know, a three, four cup set. That's kind of like, uh, I wouldn't say our set, but what we would recommend, excuse me, that Coke is killing me. Um, as like a starter set for some edge cups. So got a bunch of new stuff coming guys. Um, we are looking into, um, having our own line of hoods made. Um, we're talking to a whole bunch of people right now about uh, getting some really nice hoods at a good price. So as those come, uh, as I get some more details on those, you know, I'll be sure to tell you guys, but anyway, we'll see you next week and, uh, 7 PM central time next Wednesday. Bye. Dustin, hold on a second. You need to get you need one of these bad boys. That's what you need to get. Not to brag, but yeah, these are uh, this is a handy little thing to have. Um, there is, I'm not gonna even try to uh, sugarcoat it. There's a lot of money here, but uh, a little a set like this really does come in handy, especially when I was doing aerospace work. It uh it really helps out a lot. But little, I uh, saw the comment come up about having a big set. So there's a big set. Anyway, good night, guys. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate your support, brother. See you guys next week. I got to jump over wires. <laughs>